Brigham Young University's location puts the campus within easy reach of some of the world's most productive fossil beds. When the weather permits, you'll find BYU paleontologists on a quest for evidence of ancient life. BYU Weekly's Aaron Roche met up with a team at work in Dinosaur National Monument on the Utah-Colorado border. Starting off at 9 a.m., this team of BYU paleontologists haul their materials and tools up steep and treacherous terrain. Working in the sun and wind for up to 10 hours a day, they're finding fragments of a long-ago world. Here, some of the largest land creatures of all time once roamed and died. The stereotypical image of a paleontologist carefully teasing each fossil out of the rocks with a brush isn't always correct. Sometimes they call upon more powerful tools. We said, Here, here's the layer that we want to go to. And they drilled the holes and put the charges, the two different charges down there with a the blasting cap, blew off a layer, came back, we checked it out, perfect, they did it again. They repeat that process a few times to get this down. And then we come in with our, with our air compressor and our jackhammers and we work the rest of it down to the bone layer. Dynamite loosens the rock layers so workers can dig deeper through the rubble with jackhammers, chisel tools, and ice picks. Their work brings to the surface all sorts of dinosaur bones, including a femur, rib cage, toe bones, arm bones, and vertebrae. Often these bones cannot be linked to a species until completely extracted and taken in for study. It's not uncommon to find a skull inches from a different dinosaur's toe bones. Some are really easy to tell, like they took out a couple skulls uh, a few years back, and you can kind of tell when you're looking at a skull, you know, but usually it's quite tough. After 116 million years, these dinosaur bones are finally exposed again to sunlight as BYU students and their professor worked hard on the tops of hills in the middle of the desert. Over time, the bones have turned a dark brown color from their stay inside the rock. Earth movement has scattered these bones across the desert so that even the most experienced paleontologist can't estimate where certain bones could be found. A long and tedious task on behalf of BYU students requires that they carefully plaster the bone before extraction. This bone right here from top to bottom is cracked into millions of little pieces, but BYU students take a glue called Vinax, cover the bone in it, so then when they extract it, it won't crumble. After the bone is covered in Vinax, wet paper towels cover the bone. Then plaster and burlap seal the bones for travel. These bones look to be from a brachiosaur, but the researchers can tell this dinosaur lived after the brachiosaurus went extinct. BYU geologists plan to find a new name for their specimen. Carrying these heavy dinosaur bones is another task for the BYU team. Well, they had one that weighed, I think, about 6,000 pounds, and that's hard to carry down the hill on your back, and so they actually used a helicopter a big helicopter to carry it, lift it up and carry it down the bottom of the hill. But the heavy weight of the bones never frustrates these students from going out for a full day's work. You know, we'll just hope we'll shoot for the best, uh, we'll pray, we'll cross our fingers and dig and what we get is what we get and we're usually pretty happy with it. This has been a great quarry here. With sunset approaching, another long day of dinosaur bone hunting comes to a close. The team heads back to camp for a simple dinner and a little bit of rest. The bones found today get shipped to the BYU Museum of Paleontology. There, other workers will use small air-powered tools to get those last bits of rock removed. Some will end up on display at the museum. But before that day comes, another day of digging up the ancient past awaits this team of paleontologists. Aaron Roche, BYU Weekly.